Welcome back to Switch to Windows. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. We are on Linux. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about this distribution today. This popped up in our news feed over on Matrix, and I thought, oh, that looks like an interesting distribution. And their stated goal is to have a Linux distribution that is super easy to switch from, uh, from uh, Windows to Linux by duplicating the Windows workflow. That is what they have tried to do. And uh, what I'm finding is having a look at their website and then installing this, and I'm installing this on real hardware, is there is uh, there are a few issues here, and we're going to address some of these. And uh, what we're going to do is first I want to, well, first let's go ahead and install the system. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's install. See here, I've loaded the distribution here onto my Ventoy build here. So we'll go ahead and load that in. Now we have our options, normal or grub. The difference is grub will be like uh, your BIOS and your normal will be like a UEFI mode. Go ahead and do that. And now we can try it or we can install it. Let's go ahead and run through just the installer there. If this was like Ubuntu, it'll boot up the desktop and then we'll have the option to install it, but we can still look around. So onto our installer here, it's auto-selecting English for us. Now, what was curious to me is I downloaded specifically an English version, and they have a variety of languages on here. That's kind of curious to me. I thought that uh, we might only have this only English version since you selected your language on your initial download. Here's our keyboard layout. Continue with those. And then download updates while installing and install third-party software. We'll go ahead and do that. And then we can erase the disk or something else. We'll go ahead and erase the disk. Having a look at our advanced features, looks like we can do LVM and we can do encrypt the drive as well. We're just going to keep it as whatever it was by default. And now we choose our drive. So the sand disk is our Ventoy disk. So I don't want to do that. This guy here is the SSD we're going to be installing it on. We'll hit install now. And uh, of note, this is being installed onto a actual hardware. This is not uh, a virtual machine install. That 32 gigabyte is a small SSD that I keep around just for installing and testing software. Let's pick our location. And now we use our and our enter our information here. And now it's just copying the files, and when this is done, we'll just come back and see what our next steps are. All right, now that we're back, I have rebooted the system. I did reset the weather to the current location where I am at right when I'm filming this guy here, which is somewhere close to Iron uh, Ironton, Ohio. Uh, of course, I won't be here in a few days, so I don't care if you know that, uh, but... Uh, with this, I want to have a brief look at what we have, and let's have a look at their website. So what their stated goal here is, they say Anduin OS is a subtraction on Ubuntu instead of addition. Custom Debian-based Linux distribution that aims to facilitate users transitioning from Windows to Ubuntu by maintaining similar operational habits and workflow. So that is what their stated goals are. They have your download option and they have a documents page. And it looks like, uh, there you go, I can do that one. I can't seem to go there right now uh, in a new tab. Uh, as you go to your download option, you can see that we have our English and then we have a variety of different languages. And that's one of the things I thought was interesting is you download it to your area, but you still have to select your languages on the install. Now, the good news is they have this streamlined back down to 1.7 gigabytes of a download, which is totally cool. Uh, however, um, you kind of get what you pay for in that respect, whereas they're does seem to be some issues with the distribution as far as utilizing it and their stated goals. So they say it's ready to use. It is much smaller in size. That's great. Uh, similar to Ubuntu. Now, first and foremost, is this Ubuntu or is this Debian? So they're talking about Ubuntu here. They say it's a custom Debian-based system. Well, if we go in and we have a look at our package sources here. So let's go into Etsy and apt. And you can see there's a sources list and nano sources list. You can see here, this is Ubuntu. This is not 
how Debian does their repositories. This is how Ubuntu does their repositories. So this is Ubuntu. Uh, this is not Debian, although obviously you can make the argument that Ubuntu is based on Debian, which is true. But if you're talking about the true parent, Ubuntu would be the true parent of this, not Debian. Uh, because of its utilizing the package bases of Ubuntu and that it's making some changes. So uh, they say it's a friendly interface, gnome based desktop environment, have beautiful interfaces, human computer interactions that fit user habits. And I find that uh, this is completely subjective in all opinion. Um, they're trying to duplicate Windows 11 and having a menu over here, having your tabs in the middle, they have a clock and uh, a system panel over on the right side. They have a weather on the left side. Other than that, it doesn't really duplicate a whole lot of Windows. Uh, there's other desktop environments that do a better job. If you're trying to duplicate Windows, I think Plasma does the best because there's there are direct themes to make Plasma look just like Windows 10 uh, or uh, Windows 11, even duplicating how the menus look. Whereas this menu, this is not a Windows 11 type menu. They say root and privacy. Privacy is no longer an uh, optional. It's essential. It's designed to gather nothing from you. We don't track you. We don't profile you. We don't target you. You remain anonymous to the system. I have not verified that. Um, I, I have a way to do that. If I plug in my uh, like a custom DNS and log all of the results, I could see if they're doing that. Uh, I didn't test any of that. They say regular updates vulnerabilities are fixed with automated security updates. I have no earthly idea if that is true. I cannot find anything that suggests automatic updates. There's nothing in startup applications. I looked through all of the cron jobs. There's nothing in here that suggests that this system is updating itself automatically. I can't find it. Further, I went on to their documentation. There is nothing in any of their documentation I can find about updates. Let me just do system. Okay. Set up a new server, enable security updates. This says it's optional on a Linux server. Um, known issues, secure boot may cause issues. Updating your system, should those commands be run automatically? Automatic updates can save time. They can keep your packages clean and renew a large, uh, the pain of at lar large infrequent upgrades. Historically, apt update has been very safe with few reported issues. Additionally, automa automatic updates are common in other operating systems. However, automatic updates are not recommended for most Linux distributions. That doesn't tell us about updating the system though. There's nothing I could find in the system here. There's no applications. They have stripped out the Ubuntu automatic updater. So if this system is automatically updating itself, I don't know how it's doing it. There's not even a software store installed. I mean, look, App Store. The App Store literally opens a web page, and as we search for various things to install, it's literally telling us to paste these commands into the terminal. Now, I'm not anti-terminal, but if your stated goal is to help somebody transition from Windows to Ubuntu, telling somebody to copy and paste these things into a terminal is not the way to go. Now, there has been some discussion on the um, on the uh, the pages of this, like the help forums, which there's actually only two articles on the help forum. Uh, if you go on, over to that, have a look at the community here. And uh, this is it. These are the only two discussions. And in one of these, I think it's the welcome discussion. People have said, hey, you should install a software store. Hey, we're working on that. And so that raises some questions and concerns as well. I don't think it's regularly updating itself. If it is, I don't know how it's doing it. It's not doing it on a cron job. It's not doing it on an application that's on the system. I don't know. Uh, open source. Is it open source? It does appear to be open source and ecological perfection based on Debian and uses Ubuntu's package base compatible with most of the software from Ubuntu. And it's a perfect combination of experience and ecology and they can do more. So this is just uh, just to illustrate. This is a fairly just cheap website. You click on these. It just opens these images in a new uh, a new window. Yes, Firefox. It did actually intend to close the window. Yes. Thank you. Um, moronic web browser. Um, but over here, you can see it's just, you know, work with WeChat. Uh, so what are users are saying? Here's uh, 
Uh, you, 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 is a lead developer. Here's Aimer as a developer. Code Ray is a developer. I, I get, are these developers of the system? I don't know. Uh, breathed new life into my Surface Go. Previously thought was useless. Um, there's other Linux distributions you can test out. Is it free to use it? They say yes, it's free. Kind of applications, anything based on Linux. Now, you get into the bottom of it, it's asking who is this based on. You'll notice that there's really nothing about who this is, except you find this, 2024 Aerosoft. Uh, so Aerosoft is just a Chinese company, aerosoft.cn, Chinese TLD. And uh, here is the confirmation. It's them. They've released their new operating system. And effectively, it's just a Chinese development company. So uh, what do they do? What is their goal? Um, I don't know. So that really is who this company happens to be. So I don't really know much about who the people are other than it is a small Chinese business. Their system is not particularly amazing or user friendly. It is you know, clearly based on Ubuntu, not that. You'll notice the only Office tab is open up. The reason this is, is uh, you're looking at copyrights and logos and things. Look, I, the thing that struck me about this is, isn't that only Office's logo? <laughs> it literally is almost exactly what only Office's logo is, just a slightly different color. Uh, of course, only Office is not one of the uh, options that they have inside of their uh, options here. If you go to install your Office, they have WPS Office, which uh, WPS Office is a free to use Office suite, but it is not a open source. It is a proprietary Chinese software. And you can see here that they are... They're trying to be a user-friendly system, and here they're having you run a wget script and then manually installing a .deb package and then running our, uh, running our install through there and then removing the original .deb file. So they're running the files. Just This is not something like sudo apt install LibreOffice. That can be difficult for a person brand new to Linux. This is usually how I install software. I usually prefer the terminal. But when it comes to new users, I'm not going to tell somebody to install a software like that. Here we're running a wget. My lord. This is raising serious red flags to me. They are, in my opinion, failing at their task of creating a system which is user-friendly to help transition a Windows user onto a Linux user. And I thought I was going to download something that looked a lot like Windows, like I said, and certain Plasma builds. I, um, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but Makulu Linux in the past has done a great job of really duplicating exactly what Windows looks like. If you're looking for something that's a Windows clone that runs Linux, Makulu would be an option. Of course, you have similar layouts inside of Zorin OS. You have a Windows and a Mac basic layout you can use. And, uh, of course, in my opinion, if you want to switch to Linux and you want the best, easiest transition, Linux Mint is the way to go because it, it works. It configures everything. We also have Flatpak out of the box. This system here, it is based on Ubuntu, but they do not actually have Snap installed. So if you go ahead and do a Snap list, uh, which is what you'd run to see the lists, you'll see that Snap itself is not installed. Uh, flat pack is also not installed. You can install either of those systems with it, but without having a software store, using a web-based system to tell us to run commands like wget to install obscure office suites, whereas they, I mean, there's a number of other office suites that they could have installed. Here's your web browsers. We have Google Chrome. Uh, again, look at this. You're doing a wget. You're adding, um, you're adding keys into the key ring. You're downloading, uh, you know, adding things to the repositories before you're getting it installed. Here's Chromium. Here they're adding the Chromium beta repository rather than just you. Oh, I think they're doing that actually because Chromium is now a snap in Ubuntu. So I think they have to add the repository to get the Chromium browser installed. Uh, here's Firefox. Of course, Firefox is pre-installed, but again, you have to add the repository to get around Ubuntu's snap package. Here's Microsoft Edge, or again, wgetting. Uh, you're running a, a dpackage on a .deb file. 
uh, and then Opera, of course. Uh, we have to have the the Chinese web browsers in here. So here, once again, we are adding uh, we are adding repository keys and and things like that. So there's there's really nothing in here that is actually look at this. Ooh. Visual Studio Code. This is not for new Linux users. This is not for somebody switching over to to uh, uh, Linux from Windows. And so as much as I was trying to find something good and positive about the system, I, I'm kind of uh, woefully at a um, <laughs> I'm kind of woefully at a loss here as for how to uh, uh, how to proceed. So our memory is not bad. It's using 1.4 gigs of memory. Processors are, aren't working, you know, aren't, aren't aren't overworked here. It is a good snappy system. So it's not like uh, it's not like the system itself has serious problems in how it's running. Uh, looking at the about, we are running Wayland by default for those wanting Wayland. Uh, you do have the option on the login screen, which is, of course, using GDM. You can select your X uh, if you want the X instead of Wayland. You can see we're running GNOME version 42. I'm not following the GNOME development much, but that sounds like an older version of GNOME. Is that not older version? Um, and this is the latest version of, of this one here. You can see the other system specs up here as well. And so overall, what we're getting here from this system is we are getting a bastardization of Ubuntu, which is stripping a lot of the core functions to make Ubuntu work well, like automatic updates, a good competent software manager. And even as much as I don't like snaps, the snap repositories do give us a lot of software that we don't necessarily find uh, over in um, uh, over in, in some Linux distributions that don't have Snap or Flatpak enabled. And so, in my opinion, this is one that you definitely want to avoid. On top of this, it is from an obscure Chinese company. And for that reason, and the fact that it just it doesn't bring anything to the table except being yet another Linux distribution with a fairly poor execution, I would probably avoid this one, even though it is going around in the, the news articles about the latest and greatest new Linux distribution to switch from Windows. Now, if you want to switch from Windows, I would point you towards Linux Mint first and foremost. Uh, you might look at... Um, uh, I've had a lot of good luck on MX Linux, which is uh, which is actually based on Debian, not Ubuntu. Uh, Linux Mint, of course, having an Ubuntu and a Debian-based version. Uh, a lot of people like um, Zorin OS is a great one. Linux Lite is a great one. And you could even go with the Ubuntu itself as way better options if you are wanting to try out Linux um, from Windows. I think any of those are going to give you the better options than this will. So there is uh, my thoughts. I was excited when I saw this and I downloaded it and it was like, oh, great, I can download this one without going to a coffee shop. It's not massively large. It installed just fine on real hardware. The reality is, though, uh, we get we have a firm grip on an empty sack with this particular distribution. So there is my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about this distribution if you've uh, played around with it. Um, and uh, I guess we'll leave it at that. Um, so much for those amazing, uh, amazing articles trying to steer us towards the latest and greatest Linux distribution. There's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts and try out those other distributions instead if you're switching from Windows. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.